Hi everyone, hope you guys are doing well and keeping safe. Uh, please let me know in the comments if I am audible to you. And then we'll start with uh, one of our very exciting sessions uh, for today, uh, which is uh, Daffodil Health Hiring Procedure and everything you need to know about it. Uh, so if you can please let me know. And then uh, if I am completely audible, then we can go ahead with the session. Okay, okay. Thanks for letting me know that, everyone. Uh, I would like to uh, start up with the session and introduce our guest for the day, uh, who is Amal. He is the CEO and founder of Daffodil Health. Although uh, I'll be uh, telling you more about it, but we have a question hour session here, wherein he would be telling you more about uh, Daffodil Health, its hiring procedure, what do they do, and how is it going to help you or if you have any opportunities uh, there so uh, i will directly call him to the webinar and uh, if, if you guys have any questions then you can drop in uh, all those queries in the comment section we would be taking them up uh, by the end of the session so uh, just drop your comments there and uh, i'll i'll just add amal to the stream hi amal how are you doing Hey, hi, Sidra. Thanks for having us uh, on the show today. Um, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good, too. Uh, very excited for this session, though. Uh, so uh, before, like, uh, although there are a lot of comments coming up, but uh, I, I don't want to waste any time and direct directly jump to the Q&A session. Uh, so sure. uh, my, my, my first question to you is a very basic question because everybody must be wondering uh, why daffodil health and what daffodil health is all about so i, I wanted to know what daffodil health is all about basically um i don't know about the other sidra but you're breaking up for me so i'm not sure okay i do see the question at the bottom uh what daffodil health is all about and i'm going to try and answer that but uh i'm not sure if i'm audible to everyone because your video is frozen for me right now Okay, I do see some comments though, um, but I, I think Sidra seems to have dropped off. I don't know if, uh, uh, folks, can you hear me? Um, okay, um, I think Sayantan says I am audible, so I think Sidra may have uh, dropped off. But uh, yeah, I think the question is what what is Daffodil Health all about? And um, let me try and answer that. Um, okay, there are a lot of people saying there's a lag. Okay, Shifa also confirms that I am audible. Okay, so let me try and take a shot at uh, answering that question before um, maybe Sidra logs back in again. Uh, what is Daffodil Health all about? Uh, I'm sure a, a bunch of you tried Googling us uh, because I do see in the comments that you said, you know, it's a great organization for children with special needs. Um, uh, thanks for, uh, thanks Mohit for, you know, having gone through that before and uh, letting everyone else know. And that's what Daffodil Health is, right? Um, so they say ge generally that it's a, it takes a village to raise a child, right? Um, right? Um, it takes a village to raise a child. It, what it means that it's a, it's not an easy job, and it takes a lot of people to um, help children grow, especially in those golden years of uh, zero to six years. Uh, it takes a lot of effort um, from a, from the parents' side to um, help children learn all of the skills that they're slowly learning. Right. So, uh, on the one hand, their bodies are um, quickly changing; they're going through like a metamorphosis of their own. Right. Um, uh, there will be a height and weight chart that the pediatrician would have given um, you know your parents when you were growing up. Um, or you would have seen it for your cousins, etc. There's vaccinations that they need to go through, etc. 
but uh, what we generally don't uh, see uh, is that there's a lot of development happening even in the brain of the child right um, now sometimes um, because of some natural reasons there are issues in the brain development of the child and that's when children have neurodevelopmental conditions like autism adhd um, you know there are some genetic conditions like downs syndrome asperger syndrome and so on and right now what we are seeing in with covid is that children's regular development is hampered right this is not a uh, um, the world that any of us had envisaged uh, and just imagine for a child who's uh, in that age group of 0 to 6 obviously the entire universe is alien right now right um, and because of that they have a lot of speech delays they have skill delays uh, children are struggling with uh, things like handwriting and so on which typically for all of us we just learned by looking at our um, you know adults around us which could be parents or we just uh, mimic the teacher or even our peers and that's how we learned right so um, any issues the children have between the ages of 0 and 6 that's what uh, daffodil health caters to and um, you know that's that's the intention so try see your back uh, we were yeah, yeah. question that you joined back yeah Right, right, right. So sorry, I, I lost my connection. I think there is some problem with my connection today. So no, no. I, I lost it. I hope, uh, yeah. I hope the question was clear and you answered it because I joined in the middle and it was it was going good. So I did not disturb. Great. Yeah. So um, we can yeah. probably move on to the next question and we'll keep talking more about right, that right, right, as we go on. Right. Right. Uh, uh, my next question is: What is your mis- mission and vision for Daffodil Health? If you have something in mind uh, as a vision. right so i i think the long term vision uh, is that you know because of uh, i mean uh, the the umbrella term for uh, children who have one of these uh, conditions growing up is children with special needs right and uh, it's shocking to know that almost 80% of children with special needs don't end up uh, joining the mainstream workforce when they uh, come of age right and um which means that if in any population we see that um, the prevalence of uh, these special needs is anywhere between 8 to 12% right that's the um, world's population average now if you if 80% of them are not joining the mainstream workforce it means that it means that as as a um, as humanity we are losing about 10% of this uh, workforce right and um, i think long term vision for daffodil health is um, how can we make sure that every single child across the world um can get you know a i mean a level playing field when they start off right in the ages of 0 to 6 can we give them a, a great start irrespective of where they're starting off from and uh, thereby increase you know the um improve the uh, productivity of the world by 10% right uh, in some sense so i think that's the long term vision um, making sure that every child gets off to a great start um, which then uh, you know results in 10% extra productivity for the world uh, overall i think that's the w- um, vision that we are kind of sort of um, chasing and then okay. uh, in the short term i think the mission right now is uh, to be able to help a million children uh, starting with india of course but um, what we're doing in adaptive health is um you know there are 40 million children just in india who need these services right so our target in the next uh, uh, one to two years is to be able to serve uh, a million children um starting with india and then taking the same you know once we know that okay this is the model that's working uh, taking that to the rest of the world where uh, similar problems you know continue to exist okay um so while we were discussing uh, about the point where you were telling what daffodil health is all about i think i missed uh, a, a lot of points so i just wanted to quickly recall uh, how are you exactly helping these special children right so um daffodil health is a platform that caters to the developmental needs of all children right and um right now we have um, there are three things that we do uh, to help children out one is um for parents accessibility is a problem right um actually even before we come to accessibility um even education and awareness about 
what these different conditions are and how they affect children and what are the solutions that are available right, right. um so education awareness itself in a country like india is a huge problem uh, as of today uh, so even if you google right now if you go and google for uh, autism or adhd uh, most of the websites that have information that you would see are from outside of india right uh, and there are you know some government organizations in the us and uk those websites you would see but um, and and then there are a lot of ngos that are doing some great stuff um, you know to help these children out and those are the that's the information you would see right um, there's nothing organized that you would see from india that that would pop up right so the first step i think is spreading that education and awareness um, the second i would say is increasing uh, access and improving access to uh, the services that are required by these children and typically the services that are required is uh, you know the the knowledge is spread across multiple different domains right uh, um, and the domains would be psychology speech therapy occupational therapy uh, sensory integration pediatric neurology developmental pediatrics uh, special education uh and it's crazy right for a parent who is just understanding what autism is or what adhd is um, right. for them to be able to figure out you know across all of these domains what is the help that my child needs um becomes a problem right um uh, yeah great so, uh, so uh, i just wanted to interrupt and i just wanted to ask you a quick question so if i have a child who uh, is autistic do i come to daffodil health and just just uh, tell tell daffodil health everything about what my child is going through and then the whole passage of my child is uh, like put forth by daffodil is that what you're saying yeah, from absolutely, education to absolutely. His mental absolutely. health to physical health to everything yes absolutely so um, the way it would work is uh, we have our email ids we have our phone numbers um, so you would reach out to daffodil health as a parent and uh, we guide you through the entire a journey right from you know helping you understand and counseling you as a parent um of what this condition is and how it affects children but at the same time giving you hope that look this is not the end of the world uh, there are millions of people out there who have coped with this condition and gone on to do some great things right uh, greta thunberg for example uh, is an aspy uh, right uh, she grew up with an asperger syndrome uh, this temple grandin who has been a huge autism advocate and she is um you know now being equated with jane goodall in her uh, contributions to ecology right. right so there are a lot of examples like that so that's the second step giving you confidence that look there is a um a future and you don't have to worry about it and third is then telling you that these are the interventions that are available right uh, connecting you to the psychologist uh, speech therapist occupational therapist special educator who can help out um so that's 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 part of our services uh and then but the the problem is that anything in uh, mental health and also in this space um right there is an absolute dearth of um, uh, specialists that can help right so in a country like right. india i said that 40 million children need these services but there are probably about 20 25000 uh, professionals who can help right so uh, in the best case scenario they would be able to cater to about um, a million or 2 million children what about the other 38 million children right and um that's where i think technology comes in and um that's why we're looking for engineers to build out tech solutions that can help scale all of these uh, services to millions of users okay uh, yeah uh, just extending the point that you said uh, that you're looking for engineers i wanted to ask you what all vacancies are there in daffodil health and what's the hiring procedure you follow uh, to hire a new talent right so uh, we are hiring across the board right now um, whether it's um, um, our sales and uh, business development uh, team we are hiring for our clinical team we are hiring for operations but uh, i'm guessing that most of the uh, audience here today um, you know we are also hiring for engineers right and in that we are hiring for front end back end um, uh, typically full stack developers um, but yeah you if you if you feel that you are excellent at one of the uh, two skills front end or back end we're okay with that as well right um uh, the hiring procedure is fairly straightforward uh, typically we have uh, two rounds of tech interviews uh, done by two different individuals and uh, the interviews itself are uh, very very practical uh, so we open up a um, um, code editor like um, um you know 
whatever your favorite code editor is, and we ask you to um, write a few uh, um, write 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 a few lines of code. Uh, it could be uh, a data structures kind of a problem, or it could be like a small module um, that you could you know write out in front of us, right? So. Uh, both of them are tech interviews. We don't really have uh, an HR round or something like that. Uh, but we would have, uh, you know, the last round would, would be with me, um, where we're mostly checking for um, attitude and we're checking for, uh, you know, the fitment to Daffodil Health uh, as an individual, right? So currently we are a seven member team. We have six, um, six people plus. Um, you know, Anupam, who's not been able to join us today, who anchors the entire um, engineering team and kind of heads that team. Um, so the seven member team right now, and we are looking to, um, you know, kind of double that uh, size in the next few months. Right. So, um, yeah, that's okay, why we're here and we're super excited to um, yeah. see who we get to meet today. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, so as a founder, what's your advice uh, like what, what's the advice that you'd like to give to the entry level developers in an organization or the developers who are looking to get their first job in an organization like yours? Uh, what is that piece of advice? Right. I think um, there are a couple of things that um, really worked out for me as, um, as I was going through my career, right? Um, the first I would uh, definitely say is that hunger for knowledge, um, right? Uh, you're, most of you would probably be uh, still in college and uh, you know you're looking to get some real world experience while while you're in college and i think that's a fantastic thing um just make sure that you know uh, you have your sights set on what you want to learn and be very clear of um you know and and chase knowledge right um that's the most important thing i would say at this point in time um the second thing is um the way at least I have grown in my career um, right from, you know, I started off uh, in switching systems, then I was coding for a bit, and then I did uh, operations for like a large healthcare company for about five years. Then I got into product management. Uh, so, you know, I've been a generalist uh, all my life, right? And uh, one of the things that helped me go from strength to strength and, uh, you know, even grow up the ladder in the organizations that I have been with is never saying no. Right. Um, uh, every every new opportunity that I got, um, you know, um, I have always said yes to new responsibilities and more work, and and that's how now I have like a um, you know toolkit at my disposal that I can use as and when I need. Right. So chase knowledge and never say no to um, new opportunities, new things that are coming your way. Always say yes to uh, those opportunities, and. Um, uh, the last would be, I think that, um, you know, it, it does help to also have, you know, while you are picking up skills in coding, um, one of the most important things I think that people kind of tend to ignore at this point in time is uh, working with other people, right? I think that's also super important and uh, that that really matters how you grow inside an organization is, uh, you know, your interpersonal skills and are you able to, you know, work well within a team. And, um, and then of course that goes on to, um, also meaning, are you able to, uh, guide another person, guide another team, right? So, uh, these are, I think some of the things I would say are super important at this point, uh, and people should watch out for it in their own careers. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, thanks for that. Also, uh, I wanted to know the technologies that Daffodil Health is working on on currently. Sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, a caveat there is that I think technologies will keep changing. Um, you know, today uh, there are some popular technologies. Uh, when I started my career, there were some other uh, popular technologies. So. I would say, you know, you should be language agnostic and you should be as an engineer, uh, be willing to pick up new languages. Um, but having said that, um, our infrastructure, um, you know, we use both GCP and uh, AWS right now. One of our apps is on GCP, uh, another is on AWS. Uh, again, in terms of the databases that we use, we use both MongoDB and SQL, which means we're using uh, you know, the, the two most popular uh, databases out there. Uh, so one of our app uses MongoDB, another uses SQL. Um, 
and in terms of the backend, um, Node.js is the backend right now for um, both of our apps. And uh, in terms of front end, uh, they are React or React uh, based technologies that we are currently using. Um, so um, for one of our web apps, we use uh, completely React and Bootstrap. Um, for the mobile app that we have, we're currently on Ionic, but we might be transitioning to React Native, right? So like I said, um, as an engineer, we expect that you're language agnostic and it doesn't matter what you're working on. You're willing to kind of pick that up um, very quickly. And, and engineering skills are fungible, right? Um, if, you, if you're a good coder, uh, whether it's C, C++, PHP, whatever you have used in the past, uh, or Java for that matter, uh, you would be able to apply the same skills uh, to other languages. Okay. Uh, so coming to the partnership that you have with Geeks for Geeks, I wanted to uh, ask you what are your expectations from this partnership uh, with uh, with Geeks for Geeks and Daffodil uh, for hiring mm -hmm. candidates and uh, sourcing them. Uh, so if you have any expectations, can you can you just tell us what are those, and then we can try meeting them for sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think um, so far we have we have actually hired um, a couple of people already from Geeks for Geeks. So um, I know we're fairly happy with the uh, quality of candidates that we've been um, getting from there. Um, and again, uh, with this Jobathon, I think it's a very very interesting initiative, uh, and I'm sure this is going to help a lot of um, students out there uh, who are probably in their pre-final final years, even if they're early. In, you know, uh, they've just uh, in their second years. Also, I think this is a fantastic opportunity that uh, Geeks for Geeks is making available for students. And I think um, the students are freshers, right? Uh, I think those are the two people that um, can make a use uh, make use of something like this. And I think it's fantastic. I'm looking forward to meeting some interesting people um, uh, through this and uh, hopefully also get to work with them uh, soon. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, coming to Jobathon, like you mentioned, so uh, what are your views on Jobathon and, and how uh, will it help startups and tier three and tier four candidates to start their career? Right. So uh, in a previous avatar, I actually ran an organization which uh, did something similar, right? So this is kind of close to my heart. Um, I, I ran an organization uh, called Ensense where we used to do employability skills trainings. So um, the, the fact is that even, even today in India, most of the tier two, tier three, um, city colleges don't really have, uh, campus placements, right? So a lot right. of students come down to, uh, the bigger cities and, uh, become part of the pool campuses. Um, right. Um, but again, with COVID right now, I'm not sure how many pool campuses are really happening and, uh, do they have that opportunity? A lot of things have moved online, right? So. Uh, from that point of view, I think this Jobathon is a fantastic opportunity. I hope that um, a lot of students and, of course, um, yeah, the corporates and the startups also make use of this um, platform so that they can you know, start hiring. And I, I think there's a lot of great talent in uh, for for we are not uh, at Daffodil Health, at least uh, looking for pedigree. Right. We are OK to um, hire from any college you are. It doesn't really matter for us. Uh, as long as you're able to pass um, those few hurdles that we have. And I think as part of the Jobathon, uh, you also have like a, a short test for them to answer. So I think that would be step yeah. one. And then uh, these technical interviews, as long as they're able to do well in that, um, for us, it doesn't really matter. We don't look at CVs. We don't look at um, pedigree in terms of what colleges you come from. Uh, we are open to hiring, right? Um, and I think there's a lot of talent in the tier two, tier three uh, cities and towns of India, right? And we are, yeah, uh, very, very excited and looking forward to meeting some of them and hopefully getting to work with some of them as well. Right. And and just to add a point there, do you have any percentage criteria? Or... No, we don't. Okay, okay. That's really great. No, we, we don't. I, I mean, I've, I've been a six pointer in my uh, engineering days, right? So uh, it, it's really, really unfair if I have like a percentage criterion uh, for people who are joining my team. No, I, I we don't have a percentage criterion for sure. Okay, that's amazing. Cool, cool. Uh, uh, now, uh, I think we've covered most of the points. And uh, you can tell me if I'm missing any, but I just wanted to conclude this conversation and, and 
just ask you if you have any message to the candidates that are watching this video and looking for an opportunity in daffodil health uh well i think um my only message would be that look uh, we're a we're a fairly young team right um uh, we are a 20 member team right now we've raised um one round of investment and uh, we're you know quickly um closing the second round as well um and and i think the the space that we are in is very very nascent right uh, across the world i think there is a huge amount of potential for us to grow uh, in this space uh, we have our first unicorn right now across the world uh, in this space we have our first unicorn right and uh, i think there is space for a few more um, and we have our eyes set on becoming one of those um, unicorns right so um uh, and again uh, the engineering team also right now is um, is a fantastic fantastic team the people that we have uh, right now uh, a lot of them are interns a lot of them are also in college so um, you know it's it's, uh, it's 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 crazy there are two people uh, you know uh, unfortunately because of covid a lot of college folks have themselves haven't met uh, other people right and uh, there were two people who came from different places and we ended up hiring them and uh, they are from the same college day and, and they met in our organization for the first time <laughs> and that that's to me really is just yeah. is just uh, mind blowing the kind yeah. of uh, yeah, that's world great. that we are living in right now yeah. but yeah i think it's a very young team um, and uh, but at the same time we have um, a lot of people who who help us guide us you know i you know my uh, ex organization uh, is one of india's uh, most highly funded uh, healthcare organizations uh, so a bunch of friends from there uh, they are available to guide and you know help us out so they jump in on our um, uh, calls sometimes and you know help us uh, take those decisions in terms of you know what we're doing right what we're doing wrong etc plus of course uh, within the team we are constantly learning um, you know and like you see we 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 have a bunch of technologies that you would get to ex experiment with and actually build real world uh, stuff with right so um yeah i think um, it, it's a great place to be every week um, you know we have one team meeting where it's not just about you know coding and um, you know uh, building that out uh, we generally try and make sure that you also understand the business side of things uh, what's happening in the rest of the organization whether it's the clinical team or the operations team or the sales team um, at least once a week we make sure that um, everyone understands not just how to write code but also how to build a good business right and um, we are extremely transparent all of our metrics are uh, you know openly shared with all of our team members we don't really distinguish between interns and you know uh, full time uh, hires etc so i think it's a great place to work uh, and we have a lot of fun as well uh, so it'll be great to you know have more people on board and uh, see how we can together build this out right right okay that's great uh, now I'll uh, take up some queries from the comment section section since uh, we are uh, done with the Q and A. Uh, sure. I can see someone asking: uh, are, are Daffodil Health and Daffodil Software part of the same organization? Right. I saw that. I don't know what Daffodil Software is. Um, I don't think uh, I would guess that they're not the same organization. Uh, you would want to look for daffodilhealth.com. That's our website. And um, even on um, all of our social channels, we are Daffodil Health, right? So um, I, I don't think it's the same organization that you're looking at. I'm not sure where you're looking at Daffodil Software. I did see one organization in Bangladesh, if I'm right, which I think is called Daffodil Software. <laughs> we are not the same. Okay. Right. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, there is uh, this person. Uh, and I think he wants to say if you're looking for UI UX designers too. Uh, well, actually, um, you know, our UI UX designers have taken a break right now um, and they are expected to come back and join us uh, in the month of Jan. Um, but yeah, I would uh, definitely love to speak to you. Uh, I think Vishnu uh, is the one who asked that. Uh, Vishnu, yeah, I mean, you know, I think uh, Geeks for Geeks would have my contact details or you can reach out to me on LinkedIn and we can definitely talk. There's always uh, more work to be done. Okay, great. 
uh, just waiting for uh, some more people to drop their queries in the comment section. And uh, if sure. there aren't any, uh, then we'll wind up the session because we've discussed almost everything. No worries. Uh, so, um, yeah. There's one question I see which said, uh, yeah. did I do engineering? Yes, I did my engineering. Uh, I did my electronics and communications engineering. Um, but yeah, after college, uh, my first job was in that domain. And in, uh, in communication, I worked with Idea Cellular, which is a, uh, which is now Vodafone Idea. Um, um, but yeah, after that, it's been mostly management side of uh, stuff. Okay. Also, uh, are you hiring candidates who are not Indian? Oh, well, yeah, I don't think we have a problem with, um, um, yeah, I mean, the nationality as such, but uh, uh, I, I think they did say they don't speak English and that might be a bit of a problem um, because most of the Indian languages, I think we can manage, uh, but or, or English, I think we can manage. But without that, it might be a little difficult because the rest of the team is all mostly Indian right now, right? So right. Uh, that might be a little bit of a problem. Okay, okay. Uh, so I'll wait for a few more seconds. And if you want to drop any more uh, queries in the comment section, then uh, it is the time. Uh, or else we'll just wind up the session. Uh, yeah, okay. So Dheeraj says, I've done BCom and MBA and I've learned, I'm not sure, uh, stack, right, yeah. stack. Mount stack, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dheeraj, again, uh, we, again, we don't have, uh, you know, necessity that you should have done your engineering. Uh, in fact, one of our first engineers was a physics graduate. Right. Um, um, he was doing his physics from uh, IIT Kanpur, and that was one of our first graduates. He built uh, a, a large part of our, um, uh, you know, the the parent app. Right. So uh, again, not a problem. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you have done uh, engineering or your BCom or MBA, as long as you're able to code, um, we're okay to hire. Okay. Is there uh, any opportunity for internships? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's why we are here. That's why we're talking. Uh, and that's why we're part of the Jobathon. Uh, yes, we do have internships. Uh, and we are open to hiring full-time uh, folks as well. So if you've just completed and you're a fresher, you can reach out to us. And uh, if you're still in college and if you're looking for internship opportunities, also you can reach out to us. And you can reach out to Sidra and they'll uh, definitely put you in touch with us. Sure, sure. And you can, and these people can also reach out to the website directly, right? They'll have uh, you. I'm, I'm sure you guys must be having a career option there wherein you'll be. Uh, actually, uh, we don't on our uh, on our website. We've, we've still not we don't have a career section, um, okay. uh, but you can reach out to me directly on LinkedIn. Um, right. Uh, and you can just drop me your CV there and um, yeah, we can take that forward. Yeah, yeah sure, right? sure. Or uh, you can you can drop your CV to uh, team at daftilhealth.com. That's generally the uh, email address that we are looking at where uh, people apply. Um, you can look at dropping your CVs there also. Um, I see another question which says, do you hire self-taught uh, entry-level developers? Yes. Again, um, you know, it, it doesn't really matter what, um, uh, you know, if you have done a course or you've learned it on your own. As long as, uh, you know, if you're applying through the Jobathon, they have a test, uh, you know, Geeks for Geeks have, has their own test. Uh, if you can, if you, if you clear that, then we have uh, two rounds of tech interviews that we do ourselves. And as long as you're able to, you know, do well in those, um, doesn't matter if it is self-taught, uh, engineering taught, um, you know, or, or you might've done some courses uh, somewhere, uh, all that works, no issues. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, uh, I just wanted to inform everybody that uh, I have written the email ID in the comment section. So if you uh, want to apply to any of the uh, career uh, opportunities, then you can directly email them. Uh, uh, and the email ID is this, which is showing in the comment section. Anil Yadav uh, is asking something, but I'm not sure what he wants to say. So if you can please uh, uh, rewrite your query. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is either. I, I'm assuming he's trying to say people who have 
uh, work experience uh, yeah. and that works too if that's that's what you're trying to say anil um, but i'm not sure if that's your question yeah but uh, if that's a question then then what's your uh, take on that yeah i mean um, again i mean it's great if you have uh, prior work experience right uh, it means that um, you know a few things you you might we might not have to teach you uh, from scratch so yeah if you have prior work experience also great uh, do do reach out and you know uh, we are hiring at different levels so we'll always figure out you know what level you could uh, be at and uh, potentially if if it works out also maybe uh, lead a small team yourself right so um, yeah all options are open right now oh that's great okay uh just waiting for a few more seconds and few more questions and then uh we'll we'll just wind up the session there is one question if i can take that up uh, i think yeah, yeah sure but about... yeah, yeah yeah right right um yeah i i think uh I mean, COVID's been playing uh, hide and seek with uh, all of us. Uh, we started during the pandemic, though. I, I, we started um, Daffodil Health in February of 2021, um, and our entire team is working remotely right now. Right. So, um, um, I, I think career opportunities have not really. Um, I know there are a lot of organizations that are suffering because they are unable to open their offices, but. um at least for us at daffodil health it hasn't uh, had uh, too much of an impact we work from home i am working from home right now as well um although we do have the option of opening uh, an office um i think it's a little bit of a, a blessing in disguise for us because we are now able to hire uh, from across the country right uh, and from what it looks like um, uh, even inter internationally so it doesn't really matter where you are especially if you are in a uh coding kind of a role it really doesn't matter where you are as long as you're able to join um you know we have every day we have those scrum calls uh that you're expected to join and then during the uh, you know during the week um we have a couple more calls that you would be expected to join right and as long as you're able to do that the rest of the time you work independently uh mostly right uh, so um it doesn't matter where you are um, there are no time differences if you are in india so that that's a that's a plus um but yeah i mean we are taking it as a blessing in disguise disguise right now that we are able to attract talent from across the country it doesn't matter where you are uh yeah alicia hansen i have already posted in the comment section and i have also starred the comment but i again tell you that it's daffodilhealth.com and uh, it must be showing on your screen now uh yeah uh, so this is the email id and you can uh, drop off your uh, resume here uh sarath sai is a first year college student and uh, he's asking if if he is useful to you at this age and at this point in time hey sir uh well yeah absolutely everyone is useful uh, I, i think you're you're not giving yourself enough credit if you're asking uh, if you could be useful uh, and again it need not be just an engineering uh, job like i said we are hiring across um, you know across the board um, so yeah feel free to get in touch with us and we can always see um, if we can find a role for you within the organization we're quickly expanding so um, i'm sure there is something for everyone to do um right now i'm i'm not sure what your skill sets are uh, specifically um if you're talking about engineering then we kind of spoke about what the process is to get in there um but if it's anything else do you know drop us an email or um, reach out to us on linkedin and uh, we'll be happy to drop uh sir i'm i'm going to pick up some uh, right. questions that i see here uh, i think one of them uh, yeah. says right yeah um yeah i was going to pick that up uh, again uh, uh bishwas i think we kind of covered this uh, in the webinar uh, before uh, i think uh, uh, if you really want to be a good engineer uh, you need to be language agnostic right um, and it's okay that you have picked up uh, python as the main language to learn right now uh, i think that's perfectly all right but uh, as long as you're flexible to uh, learning right uh, other languages and other uh, technologies 
uh, I think that's something that's going to help you in your career as well. Um, uh, because technology is going to come and go, right? Uh, uh, right. Uh, I mean, Java used to be the mainstay at some point, and then uh, PHP made an entry into the uh, web development scene. And today, nobody uses PHP, right? Uh, so I think even in your career, you will have to switch languages multiple times. Um, so yeah, um, it's OK to use one language as your um, sort of go-to language, uh, I would say. And whatever you can do on uh, JavaScript, um, you can do with Python as well, right? So, um, and again, I think um, I've generally seen preferences, like if you want to work on AI ML technologies, then Python might be a better language. If you want to work on web technologies, then JavaScript might be uh, a better option for you. Um, there are, you know, such small um, variations sometimes, but um, I would say that you should look at being language agnostic and you should build your um, skill set to say that, look, I can code in any language and it will take you probably like a week, 10 days to kind of switch languages right, and, and start coding in a completely new language that you have not, not used before. Right, right. Um, Varun Tej wants to know uh, if there are any remote summer internships. Yeah, I mean, um, all of our internships are remote. Uh, all of most of our team is working uh, remotely right now. We have uh, team members right from I think the northernmost would be Guwahati, and then the southernmost would be probably Trivandrum, right? So uh, across India, we have uh, we have people in our team working right now. So it doesn't matter where you are. Uh, uh, it helps to be in the same time zone, uh, but yeah. Other than that, I think um, anywhere you are, please feel free to apply. Uh, no worries about that. Okay. Uh, this person is a front-end developer, uh, React.js, and in fourth year of engineering. Does your company have anything in that area? Yeah, uh, I mean, like I said, we have uh, two apps that we are parallelly building out. One is a SaaS tool that uh, clinics and hospitals can use. Another is um, a, an app that our parents use. Um, and we are using React in both of them, right? So um, on the on the SaaS tool, it's uh, React and Bootstrap, uh, which is a web app that we are building out. On Even on the uh, mobile app side, uh, right now we are on Ionic React, which is like a... You know, you know, it's built on top of React, uh, and Ionic adds its own flavor, um, and so it'll either be Ionic or React Native that we are using, right? So as long as you can code in React, uh, I think you'll be comfortable. So yeah, absolutely, okay. those are the technologies that we are using. Someone wants to know the location of your office when the offline work starts on site. Right. So uh, our headquarters. I'm I'm based in Bangalore, so I'm guessing that uh, our headquarters will be based out of Bangalore. Uh, but we are also in the process of flipping our company to be headquartered in the U.S. Um, and we need to do that uh, for a few, um, you know, funding requirements, etc. Um, but yeah, I think uh, Bangalore will be like the main location for the foreseeable future. Um, okay. Okay. Fair enough. Um, uh, is there any hiring for front end? Yeah, we're hiring for front end, back end, and full stack uh, right now. And I think even in the Jobathon, you would see um, our preference is for full stack engineers. Um, if you can switch quickly between back end and uh, front end, um, I, I think the preference within the team is for that. Um, but yeah, if you are, you know, if you say we can, I can only do front end, then we uh, expect you to be. Uh, that much better at front end, right? Um, so your bar kind of goes up if you say that, look, I'm only a back end engineer or only a front end engineer, then uh, the bar would be slightly higher. If you say that uh, I'm a full stack developer and uh, I can do both, then the bar for you would probably be slightly lower than uh, if you're more specialized. Yeah. Okay. Satish Kumar wants to know the openings for 2022 CS students and uh, what are the domains? Uh, what domains are you looking for? I mean, uh, if you're a computer science student, I'm guessing that you want to do a coding job uh, or maybe testing. Uh, right now, you know, we expect our engineers to do their own testing. Um, so we, we are not really building a testing team within. So we, we just have coding jobs. Uh, I, I don't know if that's what you meant by domains. 
I'm not sure, but yeah. Um, so we do have final year students. We have uh, 2022 uh, passing out graduates and 2023 passing out graduates also who are working right now as part of the team, right? Uh, and I think we will maintain that mix because you know, um, obviously, if you're an intern and if you're in your final year, you might want to go out get a job uh, once you pass out. Um, and again, uh, we would love for it to happen that uh, we are able to offer a PPO for you and you can continue to work with Daffodil Health, uh, which is something we're looking at as well. But if you're 2022, then, you know, um, typically our internships start with a three month kind of an engagement. Uh, but most of us, uh, most of our interns have stayed on for more. Right. And even the engineers, um, like, for example, I think last month we got a couple of them from Geeks, uh, Geeks for Geeks. And um, we started off with a three month thing, but they've already come back to us and said, hey, can we extend this uh, and make it a six month uh, kind of an engagement, right? Which is a, a good sign for me. I, I feel happy that people want to continue to work with the team. And it tells me that, you know, it means that they are learning and they're enjoying what they're doing, right? Um, and right. that's why people typically come back and say that they want to extend the duration and we're 100% we're open to doing that. Okay. Uh, okay, I think they clarified the domain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, in, in terms of uh, data science ML uh, app development. So right now, most of the work that we're doing is in the app development uh, uh, domain, right? Uh, the idea is, I think one of the things that people, uh, I, I know that, you know, AI and ML is a, is, a, is a buzzword right now. Everyone wants to be working there, but um, please take this with a pinch of salt, right? Uh, uh, data science, it, it's there in the, in the, in the term, right? It means nothing without data, right? So if somebody is telling you that they're building ML algorithms, they're building AI and they're building data science, uh, you know, please dig deeper and see if they have the data to work with, right? And um, that's where I think we are taking a more balanced approach. Um, and in this domain, there are a lot of applications of uh, AI, ML uh, in data science that we can use. But uh, we're right now starting off with the app development, which then becomes a pipeline for this data to start flowing in, right? And once we know that we have sizable data is when we can slap uh, AI ML algorithms on top of this. And that's when that becomes useful, right? On day one, um, even if I have the algorithm without the data, it's, it's basically useless, right? So right now, a lot of the work that we are doing is in the app development uh, uh, space. And we are building out these data pipelines that help us gather what is the data that's required in this, uh, in this domain of ours, which is the um, uh, child development um, domain, right? And uh, largely child healthcare and child education kind of the domain. And once we have sizable data, and I expect that that will happen in the next um, six to 12 months for us, right? Um, once we have the data coming in is when uh, we will start working on some of our AI and ML uh, tools, which will work uh, both on, on both sides, right? So uh, this goes into predictive analytics for uh, parents of, you know, if they have a child who is uh, at, at this stage right now, how, what does the journey look like and how much time might it take for the child to cope, right? So there's a lot of predictive analytics that we can build uh, around that. And also as uh, clinical decision support systems for our clinical staff to use. Again, there is a lot of AI ML applications there that we can use. But yeah, right now we're focused on getting that data first and then we'll be able to slap uh, AI ML algorithms on top of it. Uh, and that work will probably start in six to 12 months from now. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, Varun wants to know what are the frameworks required for backend developer for your company? And right now we're do, using Node.js, uh, nothing else, no, no other fancy frameworks um, we're using. So yeah, I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Uh, Satish wants to know uh, app development frameworks, please. Again, I, th I think we covered that. Um, yeah. Even for apps, uh, there's no specific um, free. I, I don't know if your uh, question is very generic and you know, we yeah. can do another one hour session on how to pick uh, mm -hmm. development frameworks. I think uh, if your yeah. question is generic, uh, I'm not sure I, I'll be able to answer that in this. But if you're asking us um, what are we using right now, uh, all of our backend is Node.js. Our front end is a little varied. Uh, on the app side, we are using Ionic React right now. Um, and we might switch to React Native soon. Um, 
and on the web app side we are using just react and bootstrap which which gets the job done so no other uh, frameworks that we are using currently okay uh, are, are we looking so for are you looking for experience yeah right yeah um again uh, so i mean if you come with experience that's great um and um you know we, uh, again so i don't know how to answer that question it's it's uh, fairly straightforward right uh, any amount of experience that you have uh, as long as it's relevant experience then it will be useful for us in the team right uh, um but we are open to hiring new talent as well where um, you know you might not know everything and um, we might have to teach you right and we are we are okay to teaching you so yeah if you come with experience fantastic uh, that is great but if you are new and fresh also we'd love to talk to you as long as you have um, you know uh, the 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 basic skills that are required we are open to working with you and teaching you along the way okay so there are no How bars when it comes to experience uh, right yeah. yeah right right i mean if you have 10 years of experience and if you want to work with us you are welcome to come and join the team right uh, so there is no upper bar um, and i don't think there is a lower bar either uh, but it really really helps if you if you want to really clear our tech rounds um, some amount of practical coding experience helps right uh, i don't think you would um, cross that hurdle if you have like zero uh coding experience right so we also look at your github profiles and see what kind of projects you've worked on in the past um what have you coded on right and um those kinds of things definitely definitely helps so uh if you're someone who has just done a course or um you know so as part of the course you might have done a few uh, assignments that the course had or you have done your um, computer science engineering or whatever engineering and you've done a few projects on your own um i mean i would say that look uh, bookish knowledge is right at the bottom and then you've done your own assignments courses that's like the next level typically the kind of people we end up hiring are at one level higher where they have some real world experience and they've built some uh, real world tools right it might be your own pet project but you actually put that out in the world and you had some real users using them right that is the sweet spot for us and that's the point at which we you we have typically seen that there is a fitment right uh, and then comes you know actually having worked with an organization built some tools that you know users are actually using um, which is which is ideal but um, yeah we've generally not seen uh, you know that kind of uh, at least from these kinds of forums we've not seen those kinds of people apply right so yeah if you have that experience great yeah do apply and we'll we'd love to meet you uh satish wants to know if there is any ppo for full stack development in turn yes absolutely so we are open to doing ppos um again so uh, uh you, you know it depends on a bunch of factors it depends on um how your performance has been uh during the internship of course and how you have been able to work with the rest of the members in the team uh, also matters right and of course your output matters at the end of the day right so um yeah we are open to doing ppos as well but that will probably be after this 3 month uh, which is the minimum uh, internship duration that we have um any any offers for ppos would be uh, post that 3 month period okay uh adit this is according to you what is important for fresh i'm not sure what he wants to ask but i yeah, think i, I uh, think he's asking what are your expectations from a fresher um okay um so two ways to look at this question one is uh, what is the expectations um i think we just covered that uh, so bookish knowledge is great um and you know having that theoretical understanding is great um over and above that if you have done your own personal projects right um i think uh, that would be fantastic um over and above that if you have done some real world projects where you actually had real world users right that i think is the sweet spot so that's what i would suggest but if your question is more generic of uh, as a fresher what's important for you i would say is um you know yeah i mean you know keep keep be hungry for knowledge uh, you never know like like steve jobs said you can only connect the dots looking backwards right so you never know how 
one piece of information, one piece of knowledge that you used in some project helps you out in the future, right? And that might be actually the uh, differentiator between the um, the the other 200 engineers that you're competing with, right? And again, don't say no. Uh, try and do as many real world projects as you can. Um, even if it's not like working with some other company, I mean, this is the age for micro uh, micro startups also, right? And I have a bunch of friends um, who are engineers and who are just putting out their own apps, which is useful in a small way. And they earn, um, you know, upwards of uh, $200, $300 a day, right? Uh, of course, it's taken them some time. It's taken them four or five years to get there, right? Um, so, you know, look out for problems in the real world. There are enough and more problems in the world to solve right and um as a fresher just try solving one of those problems think about it from a real world perspective get out of um, um you know it could start at college and you start with solving one problem for your own college uh, and then go on to solve uh, you know other problems that exist in the world right and you have one tool at, at your disposal right now is that you can code right um, which is a great great skill set to have uh, right now right so Try solving real world problems and put things out there. That will also kind of give you a boost when it comes to your CV, right? Where you say that, okay, look, I built this and, you know, these many people are using it is a great thing to say, right? So, um, yeah, that would be, I think, um, my take on that. Okay, great. Um, I think it's time to wind up the session now. Uh, and it was really great talking to you and uh, I, I hope the session was helpful to uh, every person who was watching this uh, so thank you for joining in and uh, if you want to give uh, any piece of advice to the viewers who are watching this currently uh, then please go ahead and, and give it and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll just end the broadcast right I, th I think we've covered most of it um, uh, in the past as well um... Um, I don't think I have anything more to add, but yeah, I do definitely look forward to meeting some interesting people, uh, you know, through this. And um, I think the contact details are there. Uh, Sidra has said it or uh, through Geeks for Geeks, you can get in touch with us. And uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, hopefully working with some of you soon. Okay, great. Uh, really nice talking to you, Amal. Thank you again. And uh, we really hope to meet your expectations. Uh, so uh, yes, good luck to you and your uh, noble startup. Uh, really looking forward to uh, to send more of uh, Geeks for Geeks students to you so that, that even they can learn and uh, both of us can uh, help each other mutually. Uh, so yeah, thank absolutely. you again. Thanks and for, uh, thank uh, you everyone for us. joining in. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for hosting us, Sidra. Yeah. It's been a great experience. And uh, yeah, look forward to working with you as well. Okay. See you soon again. Right. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone.